Absolute value equations and inequalities are not the most commonly tested topic on the ACT. Of course, like I said in the last video, it is the somewhat more commonly tested absolute value concept, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. Good news is there's not a ton to remember and it's worth taking a look at. So let's say I have an equation, absolute value of x plus three is equal to five. Now in general, the equations, the absolute value equations aren't tested by themselves. It's generally wrapped into an absolute value inequality. So to solve this, I've got to get rid of these absolute value bars. Now, the absolute value of x plus 3, this quantity, is equal to 5. That means x plus 3 is either equal to 5 or x plus 3 is equal to negative 5, one or the other. So what I've done here, I call it splitting my equation, but it's just something I made up. I split this into two equations. I'm going to have two answers on absolute value equations, at least. So to rearrange and solve, I'll get x equals 2, or subtracting 3, x equals negative 8. When I said at least there, uh, you could have like a quadratic equation and an absolute value and have four answers or something like that. There's a couple of those in the book, and it has shown up from time to time on the ACT. So remember from Algebra 2, your graph of an absolute value, and I'm just going to kind of sketch one out here, looks like this, right? It looks like a V. It's reminiscent of a parabola. Like a parabola, where the x squared makes everything positive, turns the negative into positive, which keeps it from being a line, it turns it into a curve. The absolute value does the same thing, and instead of a curve, what we have here is like a corner. So very similar in that respect. Let's, take, let's start talking about the inequalities. Now, a lot of times you will see the inequalities with line, uh, uh, line segments, line, number lines, excuse me, as the answer choices. That's reasonably common. You can also see them in the questions as well. So definitely work on this problem set. It's very, very good to be comfortable with this. Now there's a few things going on here. So we'll take our time on this one. Absolute value is 6x, <coughs> excuse me, it's greater than or equal to six. Okay, well, we know what we have to do. We have to get rid of these absolute value bars, right? Now here's the, rip, the trick, the rub, whatever you wanna call it. 6x, negative six, right? We just kind of did that before. But I'm flipping a sign. And essentially, I'm flipping a sign on this in a way, right? Because this sign would flip when I solve. So whenever I flip a sign like that, whenever I divide by a negative, in an inequality, I flip the sign. And this is the other case I flip the sign. In absolute value, one of these will stay the way it is. And this side will stay the way it is. The other flips the sign, flips the sign. That's the way it works. Now I can solve this. This one will go divide by 6. x is greater than or equal to 1. This one, x is less than or equal to negative 1. Now, if we have a number line, and we have 0 here, and we have 1 here, and we have negative 1 here, x is less than or equal to negative 1. That is this, one this way. And the dot is going to be closed because it is less than or equal to, it includes that point. Over here, greater than 1. Now, here's the trick about these. Secret, you may say. Oh, that's not really a secret. When the x is greater than, your solutions are going to go to the extremes. Okay? They're going to split out. They're going to leave a gap in the middle. On the other hand, let's redo this problem. Let's change this problem up. Let's say its absolute value of 6x is greater than, oops, that's less than, excuse me, less than or equal to 6. Flip the sign here. Just, I'm not working on this problem anymore. I'm redoing it with the sign flipped. Okay. So to remove the absolute value, I've got one that's done. To do the other one, I flip this inequality sign and I flip this sign. 
Now I'll solve. X is less than or equal to 1. X is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now look at this. When I draw my number line, here's my 0, here's my negative 1, here's my 1. X, again, solid dot, it's going to go this way. Right? Greater than negative 1. And then this is going to go that way. It's going to meet in the middle. So when we start out with x is less than or equal to, it's going to meet in the middle. When we start out the other way, it goes to the extremes. Now, you're going to find several examples like this throughout the book and in the problem set. I really encourage you to work them. Um, it's as much for the fact that they show up on the ACT as for the fact I feel like they're really kind of helpful when you move on to the coordinate geometry inequality stuff. I, I feel like this is kind of gives you a good grounding for that. You may want to check that out next. Coordinate geometry inequalities are closely related to the inequality stuff, and they have the same feel as this absolute value stuff we've been doing.